Hello guys, so welcome back to the channel. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, do that. Oh, there's a fan. <laughs> Alex is late. Uh, it's just a uh, Filipino time. Filipino! Island time. Island time. <laughs> yeah, let's go explore a new site. Yeah, Pakong. Yeah. Should be fun if Alex gets here. Little Critter Mobile. Oh, okay. We can get some tanks. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Well, my tire is a little low, so Alex wants to fill it before we go. Nice shirt, though. Oh, you look cool. Yeah. <laughs> Son of all. <laughs> Yesterday, Lou. Wetsuit. Today, Lou. Alex suit. Yeah. <laughs> this is. You guys are. I don't know what you guys are thinking. Wearing black long sleeves. It's 31 degrees. I know. I need to start making shirts like that. We're in the discipline zone. We gotta wear the yeah, yeah. masks. Is that sign before entering yeah. here? Discipline zone. I'm gonna find that sign. It's pretty funny. It's a All right, let's go. All right. So like I was saying before. We are kind of doing an exploration dive today. We're going down to Bakong to scuba dive at Bakong next to the Dakomi Pier. Like pretty much right next to the Dakomi Pier, but we're not going to be able to go under it. Uh, we're meeting our friend Klaus. You guys seen him in other episodes maybe. Uh, he's a marine biologist professor here at Sullivan University. And he thinks he found another little decent muck diving site so we'll go check it out we're bringing Alex so that you know if it's a good site we'll know where to go again because we don't go diving in Bakong very often in fact I can only think of one other time we went scuba diving in Bakong and that was at the San Miguel Pier so yeah I, we definitely want to find more locations in and around Bakong <laughs> Let's go check out your site. Fisherman spot. Right here or what? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, you know, I usually go out here. Nobody says anything? Nope. It's way bigger. Uh, remember? Yeah. This one looks small compared to the other one. So, so right, this, I, I never go to the proper pier, but this thing, which I believe in English is called a dolphin. The dolphin. That has died, so I wouldn't do it today. But it's on, like on, on, on weekends. Yeah. 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 So that's the Comey? Yeah, that's the Comey. Yeah. That's the Comey, and that's San Miguel, where we went. Yeah. And the thing is, they, this used to be like four looks of cars. But... Alright, guys. Let's go check this dive side out. You ready, Klaus? For sure. Yeah, yeah. Good dive side. Judea? I'm ready. <laughs> I know you're gonna eat the fish while we're gone. All right. Well, those guys have awesome beds. Got our Filipino mask soap. Let's go, Alex. So we're heading to a dive that we haven't been to before, and let's call it Dakomi North. It's next to the Dakomi Pier, but on the north side. And the first little critter we run into is this quite big frogfish. It's a clown frogfish and about the size of a baseball. He's just hiding in the grass, watching the world go by. Right near him was this gray moray or white-eyed moray. And these guys are always peeking their heads out of holes and caves and rocks. Just kind of looking around and watching things go on. I don't really know what they're doing. I've never seen them hunting. Just kind of sitting there watching. 
The first nudie break of the dive is technically a sap sucking sea slug, but what I like to call this kind is a lettuce nudie, because it kind of looks like lettuce. Next to him was this weird guy that kind of mimics a regular sea slug. They're pretty cool. It looks like a regular sea slug that we see all the time, but it's got the rhinophores and the butt feathers in the back. And they are kind of a cool color. It looks like they've been dipped in green. Well, this is a hilarious species that I've definitely never seen before. And I'm really glad we found it. It was super tiny, about the size of a BB from a BB gun. And this guy is hilarious. The way he moved, he would just kind of like lurch forward and then scoot. Lurch forward and scoot. It was so funny. I could hear Finn laughing underwater as he filmed it. And then I got to film it. Because it's really hard to see with the naked eye because it's so tiny. But when you get it in the camera with the macro lens, it's pretty hilarious. This guy's going to be an awesome addition to our book. And I really hope we find more. Because now that I found this one, I can see that there's a lot more species just like it in different colors. So, awesome find. I'm glad we found it. It's going to be awesome in our own book. So now that we know this guy exists, we're definitely going to be keeping our eye out. I mean, they're not exactly easy to find. They're so, so tiny. But now that we look in the book, there's a lot of species of these. What really cracks me up is the way this guy was moving. Here, I take it out of slow motion to do real time. And just look how, <laughs> look how he moves across the sand. It's so hilarious. I could kind of see that with the naked eye. But when I turned on the camera with the macro lens, it was really funny. Hard to hold still, because I was laughing. This guy's a great little find, and I can't wait to search for some more. Now, if there was ever any question about how good our guide Alex is, this guy would take away all doubt. This was a flatworm on a piece of grass that not only was the same color, but very tiny. In fact, he's so tiny, you see those little two rhinophores up front? I didn't even know they were there until I looked at the footage later. I put it in real time speed here and you can see him crawling on the piece of grass and just how tiny it is. In fact, even when he was pointing at it and making the sign for nudie branch, I still could not see it. He even told me to turn on my camera and look because this guy was just almost invisible with the naked eye. But when I turned on the camera, I was amazed. There's a cool little flatworm right there. And it's pretty cool that he has rhinophores. I rarely ever see a flatworm that has rhinophores like that. It's very strange. And then on another piece of grass, in the same situation, I had to turn on the camera to see was this little sea hare. Now this is a common one that we see a lot, but I wanted to put my thumb next to it and show you just how tiny this guy is. If you look closely, that little spiral circle next to him, that's his eggs. He just got done laying all those eggs on that piece of grass. Again, I have no idea how he found this guy was being so tiny. I'm very impressed because no way me and Finn would have found that on our own. Here's another angle, just a little bit zoomed out and you can really see how tiny it is. So look at this thing, super unique. In fact, there's so many robust and ornate ghost pipe fish around that we don't even film them anymore. But look at these two. <laughs> you thought there was only one, didn't you? When he moves, you can see there's a couple of them. Now this guy is crazy looking. And this is technically called a velvet ghost pipe fish. And it's the first one I've ever seen.
When we get a close up, you can see they're very similar to a robust ghost pipe fish, but, well, they're a velvet. They have a velvety texture, I guess. I mean, I didn't pet it, but it looks fuzzy. I assume these are a little more rare than the rest because I've never seen them out of how many dives I've had here in Dowlin. And it's really a unique find. Really glad we got to see it for the first time. Especially that small one. <laughs> that small one in the back there, it is so weird looking. I've never seen these guys in that shape. Well, I've never seen this species at all, but I've never seen a pipefish looking like that. Look at him, he looks like a little stumpy. I'd like to know if you guys know if they all look like this or this one's just a little weird. Here's an awesome little nudibranch, or actually a leaf sheep, sitting on the side of a leaf. You can just tell how tiny these guys are. And there's some skeleton shrimp right there, just hanging out. I don't always see the skeleton shrimp when I'm filming these guys, until I look at the footage later. That's how tiny they are. And here I'm comparing it to my fingernail, just so you can see how small they are. Alright, awesome. This is a really cool one, and I'm glad we got to find this for the first time. And honestly, it was not the easiest to film. Not because it's tiny. I mean, it's definitely not the tiniest that we've ever seen. It's about the size of a quarter, which is perfect size, actually. But it was on the side of an anchor block. Just, just really hard to get to. It's kind of hard to explain, but super hard to get to. But that being said, it's going to be an awesome addition to our book. And... Can't wait to find some more. So I only got footage of one of these species, but there's actually two together here, and about four inches apart. But as I said, they were this huge square block that is used for boat moorings, and they are both just really hard to get to. I had to be in a really weird angle, but it was worth the effort. Here we find a little tiny algae shrimp. Sometimes they can be green or sometimes they can be brown or red. But either way, these guys are tiny. This is about half the size of a BB and really hard to find. I have no idea how Alex found this, just floating on grass that is the same exact color. But here, if you look closely, you can see he just, he really is a shrimp. And this is a favorite for underwater photographers, but, well, they better have a super macro lens to be able to film this guy. Here's a little bit farther out view, and this guy isn't the easiest to film because not only is he tiny, but he's always jumping around from grass to grass. But sometimes I got lucky and he would just sit there long enough. Nearby, Alex told me he saw some Nemo eggs hatching. So I zoomed in on them, and I didn't see any of them actually hatch, which would have been fun. But this was near the end of the dive, and I didn't have time to sit around and wait. But at least I got a little macro shot of the next generation of clownfish, or, you know, Nemo's. So this was an insane dive. So much fun. We got to explore a new site. We also got to cross two more new nudibranch species off the list for Project Nudibranch. 